Hello, and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick, with the city of Hampton. And today, we're going to meet one of our Hampton neighbors who has written um, now two children's books. Um, welcome, Connie Souls. Thank you. Welcome. So first of all, I want to say, you you had a very active career <laughs> um, that you are retired from, and it was yes. not writing. No, I didn't know I could do that. But it self-wrote it. Right. So, okay. so you were a music educator. Yeah, that's right. And tell us, I'm, and I'm going to hold it up here. Um, Please. Uh, how did this book, um, Mio, come about? Very interesting story. I was engaged to somebody that said he'd been in love with me since he was six years old, but he was afraid to tell me at 65 years of age, we met on the Internet. Oh, my goodness. And he professed his undying love. I said, you're crazy. Why didn't you tell me this in high school? <laughs> well, you had a lovely previous relationship, though, didn't oh, you? Oh, we did. We did. But um, I didn't know about it. It was all one-sided. <laughs> oh, okay. So his son, Taylor, decided to enlist in the Army after 9-11, like so many other young men did. Right. He was sent to, of all places, Afghanistan. And he was killed in six weeks' time mm. by a female suicide bomber. And this cat was kept by Jesse in an area near Lynchburg. And that just about killed him. Finding me, helped him overcome that, but that didn't last too long. Uh, when you were trailing the case on going into National Cemetery, that does something to you, losing your child. Nobody should ever have to bury their child. Right, right, okay. that's so, so sad. Anyway, um, I said, he kept saying, I, I'm getting very decrepit. I, I can't make it. I'm going to have to crawl. I went, no, you come down here. I'm going to take care of you. And he said, only if I can bring the cat. And the cat was named Sarge. It had stripes. That, does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ties in the army. And, and the cat was the sons, David's, right? Yeah, uh, not uh, David. Oh. Taylor. Taylor, okay. He has an Egyptian muzzle. I don't know what that meant, but I went, Egyptian, time traveling, let's do it. And that's what led me to this book. And uh, as you know, it's pretty complicated. You know, it is. It is a little bit complicated for kids. So it seems well, like it's all taking place. Well, it's also place. written for adults. Oh, okay. Who can read it to their children, and it can be passed on forever until it gets worn out. <laughs> then they can buy a new book. Oh, okay. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Mio and Cleo were servants in the Pharaoh's court, and he was in love with Cleo. But... but so you don't find this out until the end of the book. Exactly. You think it is a contemporary uh -huh. um, story. That's where I tricked you. <laughs> and so he, the pharaoh was in love with Cleo. Who was a person, Was a, a, a servant. Right. But she was in love with Mio, the male servant. The pharaoh got very, very jealous. And he said, cats are sacred. I can't kill them. I'm going to have to do something else. So he had turned into a cat, put it on a barge on the Nile with only five days of food and water. And Cleo was captive too. She was in something like a cage. A candle got knocked over, the place caught on fire. She escaped. She ran quickly after him, trying to save him. And the mystery, and I don't tell that till book number three. Oh, okay. The magic force is the power of music. The music saves him. Crocodiles are on either side of him. And she's gasping and says, oh, you know, we've got to save him. Somebody help. The power of music took him away but they didn't time travel at exactly the same time. That's how they end up in Virginia. 
they recognized each other. I sound like Yogi Bear now and say deja vu all over again. Mm -hmm. And she had this, her heart started beating and his heart started beating. And they knew, they knew some from somewhere. And so they got together and they started humming this Egyptian tune, a mystery tune. It turns out it was their love song in Egypt. And a poet that was in the campground heard it and came out and they started writing feverishly, I'm going to put words to it. And so they sang to the families that were at the campground. And that's kind of how things got going. <laughs> so, and, and you back into this, because you start yes. with the contemporary part, then you go right. back to Egypt, and then it, the first book leaves you wondering. You know they're going to escape yeah. because they were in the present tense, <laughs> or the future for them. Yes. However, that it sort of yeah, goes back I had, and forth. I had a hard time working that out. <laughs> so, um, the illustrations are, are beautiful. Wonderful. That's what's selling the book. How did you find this illustrator? There was a, a divine intervention again. I tried for two and a half years to find the perfect person. I walked into Blue Skies Gallery, and I said, can anybody draw a Disney-like character? She said, there she is right there, Margaret Jester. So it's a local person yes, also? Yes, ma'am. Oh, that's wonderful. And she's a young gal, and believe it or not, she actually does what I tell her to do. And she didn't say, why do you want to do this? She knows. Mm -hmm. She takes the script and creates pictures that I would never have thought of. They're gorgeous. Uh, they, uh, everybody, even and little children. You know, I think, you know, you, it, we've showed people the cover, but when you look, look inside, Egypt, like here's one of the Egypt ones, you thought, can really how see in the, world did you the do detail that? and the vibrancy. It's gorgeous. It is. I, I'm, I am so fortunate to have found to have her. And you've just turned to the love song. Mm-hmm, I have. So... So you found the illustrator. How did you um, get the book published? Well, that was very interesting. The man that you just met, uh, responsible for that happening. And we used a local publisher, and they've done a super job. That's why we went back for book number two. All right. Now, tell us just a little bit about book number two. That's one. You said uh, you just got it yesterday. I yes. haven't had a chance to look at it yet. I know. So it's another time travel to yes. a different period. Yes, to Blackbeard the pirate ship. Perfect tie-in to Hampton. And I'm going to be there selling them at the Blackbeard Festival. Oh, got ya. And the pictures are just, I, I think this may be even better. I love this one. Look at him. He's showing off for Cleo. Oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. So, um... Uh, that's how it came to be, and uh, this is going to go, I'm going to do a book signing in April at Barnes & Noble. Okay. And he has, Al has arranged to have it put on Amazon, and everybody knows Amazon, so ka-ching, ka-ching. <laughs> well, so you're hoping to make some money off of this, huh? Indeed. And my great wish is to have this to return to the style of the real Walt Disney. Some of the lo local uh, la latest mu uh, musicals uh, kind of leave me cold. I want to have good morals. I want it to be something that children are going to enjoy and they're going to look forward to the next book. And the next book after this one is going to be uh, Fort Monroe and the entry of the slaves there and on over into the Battle of the Ironclad. Oh, interesting. Yes. With the time travel concept, you can you can really hit any point in exactly. time that you want to write about exactly. or share. Um, and you are writing songs to go with this, right? Like the yes. song that they sing. Yes. You've I have sort already of written. sent that to music. And that's probably going to be available, I think, on the website. And... I don't really care if the people in Hollywood take my music. I'm not that possessive. If they see what I see and they choose to make it into a full-length movie, I'm hoping Steven Spielberg is going to find it. Well, now that is very ambitious. Look That's at you. Me. 
I always say the sky's the limit. All right. And maybe not. <laughs> so for right now, people can get your books. You're going to do some book signings. You're going to be at Blackbeard. Right. Um, but also, you do have a website. And right. we'll, we'll get the... Um, that we be to put that up on the screen. People Good. can order the book from there. Yes. You're willing to sign the books. Yes, and that's the great thing about buying it now. I had 200 books printed so that when I get the order online, I can autograph. And if they will tell me who it goes to, they'll have a personal inscription. Isn't that wonderful? It is. Technology is great when it works right. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to ask you, why Egypt? What is the tie-in? Obviously, you're wearing you, a this lovely cat, this Egyptian. This has Egyptian okay. muzzle. So did you have to learn about Egypt and the pharaohs, or did you already know? I already knew. Oh, okay. So when I heard him say Egyptian muzzle, went click. I know something about this. I think everybody is interested in Egyptology. I yeah. know I am. It's fascinating. You Absolutely. Know, uh, and they know things that we still can't figure out. So I thought, this is a rare opportunity to get it right. <laughs> All right. Well, that is wonderful. So we need to wrap up now. Yes. But thank you so much for coming, Connie. Oh, I'm so delighted I finally caught up with you. <laughs> <laughs> right? Even though we live in the neighborhood. <laughs> we do, right around the corner from each other. But thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. And thank you for watching. I hope that you are inspired by the story in the book, but also the story of Connie and the second career that she is enjoying and thriving in. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>